Welcome to physics class. Today we are going to talk about electric field due to uniformly charged disk. We want to calculate this electric field on this Z axis that is perpendicular to the disk and is passing by the center of disk. Now we consider this disk is thin, thin disk, uh, and is uniformly charged let's say is uh, charged with a positive charge plus Q. Now what do we mean by uniformly charged? Means the density sigma is constant. What do we mean by the density? Is the charge over the area. If I take the whole charge on this uh, area of this whole disk and I divide it by the area of the disk, you be identical to this element of charge dq over dA. If I take this pink area and I take the charge on this pink area, I call it dq a over this pink area dA, you be identical to the total charge on the whole disk over the area. The density sigma is given by coulomb, uh, coulombs per meters squared coulomb per meter squared now the objective is to find this electric field uh, due to this whole uh, blue disk on point m from the z axis that passes from the center and perpendicular to the disk now for this what we are going to do we take an element of charge dq from the pink area uh, we call it dq the pink area dq it will be producing an electric field DE. This DE it will have horizontal and vertical component. The vertical component we call it DEY and horizontal component DEX. Now if we go symmetrically from the origin of the disk from the other side and with the same amount of the charge or the same uh, uh, element DQ, also, we'll be producing an electric field, we we'll call it DE also. This DE will have DEX and DEY. So what do we see here? On vertical axis, if I'm calculating an electric field that point from vertical axis that pass, that is perpendicular to the disk and passes from the center of the disk, the horizontal component of the electric field vanishes because this horizontal component is has same magnitude as this one and they are in opposite direction they cancel each other that means my electric field that the produced by dq will be <coughs> just de in y direction it will be just de now if i consider let me clean this so we can see very well if i take I keep just this part because we know everything is just on y axis and I, I will work just on this part. So, uh, this, if I call it theta, it will be just de cosine of theta. So, this is what would be my electric field on z axis. I'm sorry, is I call it y, but it's easy. D is z because if we work on this, if I call this is z. This is y and this is x. Okay, we know that the electric field will be produced only on the axis. If I take this element of charge, we said dq, dq on the pink area, it will be producing this electric field, the de, that has horizontal, uh, horizontal uh, vertical component, dz. So this DEZ will be just DE, the magnitude of this vector, times the cosine of theta. Uh, the DE is the element of electric field. It will be just Coulomb constant times DQ over the square of the distance between the point M and the charge DQ. And I call it R prime. So why I call it R prime? So we don't get confused with the radius of this uh, pink circle or pink area. Um, now, 
the what we are going to do is to find dq which is sigma da this da we just said is the circumference this da is the a bank area this bank area will be just the circumference 2 pi r times this length dr okay so this is what will be dq now let put our d e z here we just column constant divide by r prime squared times sigma 2 pi r dr times cosine of theta now uh, we need to find the total electric field the total electric field will be EZ will be just the integral of DEZ, uh, which is the integral of K sigma 2 pi R dr cosine of theta over R prime squared. Uh, we, we see here too many variables. We see R, which is the radius, this radius. We see the cosine of theta, with theta, and also r prime. We need only one variable in one integral to solve this integral function. So one only variable, let's say we need to find the relation between cosine theta, r prime, and r. Now if we go to r prime squared, it will be just square root of z squared plus r squared. If I use Pythagorean theorem, I have this tri tri triangle perpendicular here. So r squared will be just z squared plus r prime, I'm sorry, r prime squared will be just z squared plus r squared. Now for cosine theta, it will be just the adjacent, which is z, over hypotenuse, which is r prime, and r prime is just square root of uh, z squared plus r squared. We know z is constant because we are calculating an electric field at fixed point, call it m, and this z is constant. The variable in this case uh, is just r. Now, if we plug here, we found out we will find our electric field will be just integral k sigma 2 pi r dr cosine of theta we say this z over r and also we have r squared at the bottom you'll be r cube r cube in this case r prime cube it will be just z squared plus r squared power 3 over 2 now we need to find the integral uh, limit where it, go, it goes from where to where. We start from origin, means our, the, our charge varies. It goes from the origin to the extreme side of the disk. The extreme side of the disk, we call it the radius r. That means we go from 0 to r. Here we said our electric field will be on z direction, this will call it easy, it will be Coulomb constant times sigma, which is the density, times 2 pi z integral uh, between 0 and r, radius of the circle, r dr over z squared plus r squared power 2, 3 over 2. Now, let's take care of this integral. Now, if I consider the, if this integral are dr over z squared plus r squared power 3 over 2. So if I, call, if I bring this z squared plus r squared equals to u, if I have du over dr, it will be what? Twice r. That means du equals twice r dr. Now, this is uh, a make var change of variables. If I bring this one upstairs, 
and here I have just our dr. Now let's bring these two here because we see two in that side. Now our electric field we said is easy. It will be just k sigma pi z. I put these two inside our dr over a z squared plus r squared power 3 over 2. Now let's clean Let's clean this because we say du, if I replace, if you see here, du is just to RDR. I replace it with du. And uh, this z squared plus r squared power 3 over 2, I just, it will be just u power 3 over 2. Now here I just replace du here. And then I replace this one with. Uh, uh, u power 3 over 2. u power 3 over 2. Now what will be? You'll be just the integral of u to the power to the negative 3 over 2 times du. Now it's very simple to integrate this function. It keep k sigma by z here. We said the electric field will be only on the axis. Is z will be just k sigma pi z integral u to negative 3 over 2 du. So we said, remember, u we said is z squared plus r squared. Now if we integrate this term, what do we we'll have? Let's put back this k sigma pi z. The integral of this term will be just... Uh, u to negative one half over negative one half. So and uh, and r is between zero and the radius of the circle. This will give us negative two k sigma pi z, and uh, it will be one over square root of u uh, because u to negative one half will be one over uh, u power to one half and then u to one half will be just square root u to uh, one half to negative one half will be just one over square root of u which is z squared plus r squared so this will be just z squared plus r squared and will be between zero and r so if I move this negative inside and z also, what I will see? It will be k sigma, 2k sigma pi factor. If I move, it will be 1, because it will be 1, uh, let go slowly. It will be, uh, keep negative here. It will be 1 over square root of z squared plus r squared minus 1 over square root of z squared. Now, if uh, let's keep z here, outside because it's here, z. Now, if I put negative uh, z inside, what will be? A, B, A, A negative z here will be plus z, plus z over z will be just 1. Now, and this will be negative z over square root of z squared uh, plus r squared. Now what will be? We just 2k sigma pi factor of 1 minus z over uh, uh, square root of z squared plus r squared. Because I have entered negative negative z. This become negative. I put it in the back. And this is positive. I put it in the front. Okay? So let's clean this. this. Okay. So uh, now let's uh, replace K and analyze what we have. Okay. Let's replace K, which is Coulomb constant, equal to 1 uh, over 4 pi epsilon 0. Now uh, we will have uh, 4. Uh, 
pi will vanish. We have 2 over 4 pi 1 half. Then our electric field will be just uh, sigma over 2 epsilon 0 factor of 1 minus z over square root of z squared plus r squared. Now let's analyze this. Let's suppose we have infinite infinite plan means if if r is too big than z what do you see the, then it will be uh, this term z over square root of z squared plus r squared vanishes because r goes to infinity any term over infinity is zero so our electric field will be e it will be just sigma over 2 epsilon 0. So if we have infinite plan, uh, the electric field will be independent of R, of radius. Uh, in the previous examples, when we have point of charge, the electric field, uh, when we calculate the electric field at distance uh, R, we said electric field it was inversely proportional to the square of the distance when we had line of charges the electric field it was uh, inversely proportional to uh, inversely proportional to the, uh, the distance now if we have infinite plane the electric field will be independent of the distance thank you